Now that our user table and our order table are created, we're going to go ahead and create our users. So we're going to be using our user model to create our users. Now what I'm going to do is to go to our viz.py. So I'm going to go to our code within viz.py in our auth namespace. We're going to use the endpoint for signing up my user. So we're going to go ahead and receive data from whatever front-end client, and then we'll be able to create a user. So Flash X provides us a model that can help us to serialize the data that we pass on to our API, as well as help us to return responses. So what we're going to do is to create that model based on our user model that we created for our database. So we need to go to our models.py. So we need to be making use of our models.py. So I'll go to the models.py in our users. And what I'll do is to copy the different fields on our model. So I'm going to go to our models. I'm going to close some of these editors. And within our views, I'm going to go ahead and use Flash Crest X to create our model. It's going to help us to serialize. So what I'm going to do is to come right here. So I'll create a variable, which we call our auth model. And I'm going to say this is going to be auth namespace. Auth. So we can create a model from our namespace. And after creating this model, then we go ahead and specify the name of that model. So the name of this model is going to be user. And then we're going to also specify the different fields that we are going to help to describe the data that we want to pass through our serializer. So I'm going to basically create a dictionary. And this dictionary is going to have the keys as those fields that you may want to expect. So I'm going to find the ID. So I'm going to pass in the ID. Now, Flash Quest X provides us with these different fields that can help us to specify the data type. So I'm just going to go right here and say from Flash Quest X, we need to import fields. And right after importing fields, actually, it's going to be fields. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be fields. What? Integer. So basically, it specifies that this is going to be an integer field. Now, we can go ahead and also create another field. For example, our username. So I'm going to say we have a username. This username is going to be fields. But in this case, we're going to say it's going to be a string. Now, you can as well pass in some, some arguments such as required equals true, meaning that this is required. It shouldn't be left blank. You can even give a description. So, for example, you can return a description such as, so I can say description. And all this is going to actually help us on our swagger So, I'm going to say our description. So, I'll close that for now. So our description is going to be a uh, username. I'll basically say this is going to be a username. And right after doing this, I'm also going to do the same thing for our email. So I'll go back to our user model. So we have our email. So I'll come right in here and say we need to have our email. It's going to be fields dot string. And what you're going to do is to basically say required is going to be for true to true. So we're going to also have our description. So we're going to say that this is going to be our description. So I'll basically come here and pass in our description. And then I'll say that this is going to be a, an email. Actually, it's going to be an email. So right after doing this, I'll also go ahead and provide our password. So we call this a password. So we call it password hash in our database, but I'm going to call it password in our serializer. So when you get this, I'll actually hash it and then keep it in our database. I'll come right here. What I'll do is to say password, and this will be so I'll say password. And what we right here, we need to have our password, and then I'll come right here and say we need to have fields. What so this will also be a string. I'll provide required if it's true because you don't need to submit it blank. Then what I'll do is to actually say required if it's true and then provide the description. So this is going to be a description, so we can pass in some description. On how on the field on the max length and so on. So here I'm going to actually say a password. So I'll just say password. And then I'll come right here and basically provide more stuff. So here I have that dot is active and is stuff. So I'll basically also add those. So I'll say is active. So I can come here and say is active and say actually I don't think I need to actually add this when creating a user. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to use this model we've created to be able to create our user. So what I'll do is to come on our specific endpoint for our method that we're going to use for that, which is going to be our post method on our sign up resource class. So right here, I'm going to actually come and decorate this with a special 
With that, the speech help us to use our model that we've created to expect data from the API. So I'll just come right here, and what I'll do is to say at of namespace dot expect. So basically, this is basically showing that we're going to expect data that's going to be in form of a model that we've created. So I'm going to say if at of namespace dot expect, and I specify which model we expect which is the auth model. So what will happen is the data we shall send as the body of this request is going to be the data that follows this kind of model. So we're going to say, this is going to actually be our, so I basically actually call it, let me change the name to the register of the actually call it the sign up model. So I'll just come right here and say that we're going to expect our sign up model. And then we're going to use this model to basically send data to our API. So I'm going to come right here and I'll, access the data from the post request so I'll basically come right here so the first thing we're going to do is to access the data from our front end or our client or whoever is making the request so we shall access that data by using plus keys request object so I'm going to import that so I'll just say from from flask I'm going to import request and right after importing request then we're going to get our data as JSON from the request so I'm going to come right here, and what I'll do is to say that our data is going to be through request dot get JSON. So basically, this function get JSON returns our data as JSON. Now, after passing, after getting our data as JSON, this is going to form a dictionary that we shall be able to access our data from. So we're going to go ahead and create a new user. So when we look at our user model right here, we can create a special command that can help us to save every user object that we create. So I'm just going to come right here and write a method, which is going to just basically help us to save our user. So I'm just going to come and call it save. We're going to take in the object from which we're going to call it. And right here, we're going to use our SQL Alchemy object or our DB instance to basically go ahead and save this user to the database. So I'll just say db dot session dot add and then I'll add self. Basically, we are adding the current object to the SQL Alchemy session and then go ahead and save it. So I'll say db dot session dot commit. So this will go ahead and save that user to the database. Now I'm going to go back to our views and right in our views, what I'll do is to create our new user instance. So I'll just come right here and say to user going to be equal to so we're going to make use of our data so i'm actually going to import our user class so i'll come right here and say from uh, our dot so i'll go to our models and then our user then i import our user class so i'll say user so i'll come right here and create a new user so our new user is going to be an instance of our, of our user class or our user model so we need to pass in our user and this user is going to have a username, so we're going to pass in our username, which is going to be equal to the username that you get from the data. So we're going to access our data. So we're going to get the username from data, but in this case, we're going to say data to get, and then we shall specify that key, which is going to be our username. Then we're going to also access our email, so I'll pass in the email, so I'll say email, is going to be data dot get, and in this case, we shall specify that we want to get our email. Now we're going to do the same thing for the password. So we shall say, uh, we actually have our password. So I'll just come right here and say password. And then our password is going to be data dot get. And in this case, we shall have password. But remember now we are creating a user we're going to save in our database. So if we go to our models, we have the password field as password hash. Now what we're going to do is to generate a password hash for that user we're going to create. So to do that, we're going to make use of Waxu, which is a toolkit on which Flask depends. So we're going to use this to generate our password as well as to check if the hashes match the password that we shall be providing when acquiring JWTs. So I'll just come right here to our views. And within our views, I'm just going to go at the top of our code and import uh, the different methods we want from Waxu. So I'm just going to come right here and say from from Waxu. So this is actually going to be from Waxu. Shall go to the security package and then we import the method. So I'll say generate password hash, check password hash. So the generate password hash is a function that basically takes in a password and then returns a hash of that password. Now the check password hash works in the way that it gets the password hash, the actual shall keep in our database, and compares it to the password candidates that we give 
So as to return true or false, and that will actually allow us to create our JWTs as we shall see later. But let's go ahead and create our password. So what I'll do is to come right here, and then instead of saying password, I'll come and change this to password hash, and then I'll use our generate password hash command or function to be able to generate our password hash. So to do that, I'll just going to come and say generate password hash, and then basically passing our password that we get from our data via the post request. So this is basically our user object, which is our new user. So I'll go ahead and save this user. So since we've written this uh, convenience command, I'm, I mean a convenience function, it's going to help us to actually save this user to the database. So I'll just come right here and then say new user. So this is going to actually be new user dot save. And right after saving the new user, then we're going to use our sign up model to basically return the newly created user. Now, since we've used our model, we can as well as use this model to be able to actually return our response. So the way we do that with class X is to say, so in this case, I'm going to say at both models, so I'll just actually say at both namespace, what? Then we're going to call the Marshall with command. So the method Marshall with function basically helps us to return a response using the model that we created. So we expect to get an object of type user return to us, but then the marshal with command helps us to actually serialize or marshal it and return it to us as JSON. So I'm just going to come and say uh, marshal with, so I'll just say marshal with, and then passing the sign up model. So this is going to be the sign up model. Now, after doing this, and I'll just come right here, and what I'll do is to just return our HTTP response. So in this case, I'm going to say return the user. And then we're going to also specify the status code. Now, the beauty with Python is it provides us with HTTP, the HTTP package that has all these HTTP status codes. So I'm just going to come and import the HTTP status class from HTTP and then be able to easily get the status code. So I'll just go to the top of our code and then I'll just say from HTTP, we are going to simply import the HTTP status class. After importing our HTTP status class, I'll just come right here and specify that the status code you want to return is the HTTP status dot created, which is our 201 status code. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to try to actually work with this endpoint. I'm going to be using Insomnia to carry out most of these requests and then later I shall look at detailing, I mean, actually go, going ahead to customize our Swag UI that we created. So what I'm going to do is to open up my Insomnia. Right here in Insomnia, I've created a new request collection. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new request. So I'll create a new request. So I'm going to call this request uh, create a new user account. So this is going to be for creating a new user account. It's going to be a post request. So I'll just come and specify the method as post then I create. So I'm going to specify the URL and that URL is going to be local post. 5000 slash so this is going to be slash off so when i go back to our code right here we have our endpoint being slash sign up so i'll basically specify that I'll actually just save and then i go back here i'm going to say that it's going to actually be our sign up so hoping that our server is running so i'll check with our server is running it's not running so i'll stop the shell and then run python run server.py so our server is now running. So when I send this request, I'm going to go to our insomnia. When I send this request, so I have to actually first specify our body. Our body is going to be in JSON. And then I'll come and form some JSON input. So we're going to have a username. And let's say our username is going to be Jonah. And then we're going to have our email. So our email in this case is going to be Jonah. So actually say Jonah at Gmail. Home. So then what you're going to also have is a password. So I'll have the password. So in this case, we're going to provide a password, and that password is going to be password. So I'll just basically provide password123 as our password. So when I send this, right now we see our user has been created, but we are having our password being now, and this is basically showing us that we have the field, the field that actually specified for password is not what we have. So we're going to actually write another model that we're going to actually also use to get our users. Now we'll go back to our code right here. 
And what I'll do is to, to create another model that we shall use to get users. So I'm just going to come right here, and what I'll do is to say uh, user. So I'll just call it user model. And it's going to also be from both namespace dot model. And then it's actually going to have the same thing. So I'll basically call this uh, user. So I'm going to use this when we're getting all getting users after measuring them. I'll call it the user. Actually, I'm going to call it user model. Actually, let me change this to sign up. So I'm just going to change this to sign up. So this is going to be the sign up model. Now I'll come and call it the user model. So it's going to have basically the same fields, uh, but we shall have some extra fields that we're going to see. So I'm going to actually specify that this is going to, these are going to be our fields. And actually, just paste them right here. So we're going to have our fields like, like this, so we shall have our ID, our username, and then some extra fields. So I'm going to specify that this is going to be our password hash, which shall return as a string. And then we shall also go ahead and provide the other fields. So we're going to have fields such as is active and is have added to this. So I'll just come right here, and what I'll do is to add active, and this will be fields. So this is going to be a boolean. And then I'll maybe provide a description. So this this description is just going to briefly uh, give state what the field is. So I'll just basically say this is going to be a uh, uh, user is active status. So I'll say user is active. So I'll actually provide here. I'll just say this shows that the user is active. So and then I'll also provide the staff. So I'll just come right here and say is staff. So this is actually going to be staff. And then it's also going to be a Boolean field. So we shall say this is going to be field. So it's going to be field dot Boolean. So we're going to specify that it's going to be a Boolean. We shall also provide a similar description. So we have description being equal to. So this will be this shows if user is staff. So right after doing this, then what I'm going to actually do is to go to our users. And then instead of using, actually, within our views right here, instead of using the sign up model, we're going to use the user model to be able to return our user after creating them. So I'm going to come right here. And what I'll do is to basically return the new user. But I'll specify that we're going to marshal this with our user model. So I'll basically come right here say user model so when you try to create a new user so i'll go back to my insomnia and try to create a new user so i'm going to create, create a user called jerry and then i'll provide the email as jerry gmail.com so when i try to sign up this time we actually get other fields returned after creating this user and we also get uh, our status code as 201 created, which means we have successfully created our user.